This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. You know, I uh, tonight I had nothing, no interviews planned, so I was going to replay an old interview from the past with like either Will Durst or somebody like that. And uh, I said to myself, why do I do that? Because I'm lazy is why I do it. Okay, so anyway, let me just uh, try and bring this over a little bit. I got to. Uh, we, you know, we got, we were, we're working on this. This is a, 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 let me see if I can move myself over just a tad here. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. That's one. Just wanted to center myself. I want to feel centered. Anyway, I, uh, I, I sat here and I thought, uh, well, I, I, what I could do tonight is I could just run one of those old interviews and then I go to the bathroom and I wash my teeth and I do a whole bunch of things and, then when I come back, there's only about an hour's worth of program left, and I know I can get through that, and so I, I get through that. <laughs> and I go, why, why am I doing this to myself? Why? Uh, and then I thought, well, you know, maybe I just start talking, you know, that it's, it's good if I, if I do that, okay? Hmm. So anyway... Uh, I figured I'd just, uh, you know, I used, to, I used to spend the first half hour of the show or first 15 minutes of the show uh, talking, all right? Uh, and, in fact, I used to sometimes talk for a half hour when we did two, oh, wait, two hours, I think we used to do. Yeah, we didn't do just an hour and a half. We did two hours, four days a week. I think at one point it was five days a week. What was I thinking? Well, I'm an old man now, and I don't have that kind of energy in me any longer. I mean, I used to go on every day on the radio, you know, on uh, Sirius XM, and I was on uh, every day, Monday through Friday, for three hours. And somehow I got through the three hours. Of course, I had uh, Christina there to riff off of and Albert to riff off of. And so, and then I would go to the phones, and we talked to those people, and before you knew it, the time was over, and... We took a couple of breaks an hour and a news break and everything, so our actual hour was only about 45 minutes. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, that, was, that was what I did. And I could get through that because I was trained to do that. But as time has gone on, I, as I get older, I go, gee, I just don't know if I can go for like 15, 20 minutes just talking and, and, and uh, uh, spouting out what I feel and so on and so forth. And I, tonight I went... I really haven't done it in a long time, and I really should do it. Rather than play some interview you've already heard before, I should do it. And I should also invite people that at any point during this half hour you feel like you want to call us, you can go over to GabNet. Over on the right-hand side of the page is a, a, a thing that says, uh, click here to Zoom us. And you just click on that, and it will automatically take your computer take your browser or whatever over to um, uh, our um, our zoom site okay and then you can just click on that and we answer it and there you go it's that easy just go over to gabnet.net gabnet.net um, and uh, I, you know I, it would be it's nice if we could get some new people too you know every now and then but if anybody wants to call me now, I will be taking calls shortly, okay? So we'll go on a little earlier with it than we usually do. Of course, what I know happens is there are people out there like Alan who don't listen to this show for the first 15 minutes, okay? They just wait till like the time when they can call and they call, okay? Which I don't blame them because the first half hour is usually them, you know, just an interview with somebody that I care about and that is a friend and, and so on. But anyway... If you want to call, you can start calling now, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we can uh, 
do to get you on. And let's see if anybody else does call before before the hour. Either that or what I'll do is I'll do a, like whatever I'm going to do for a show right now, and you and I can just to hear me talk about stuff and everything, and then about five minutes before the hour, I'll sign off. And then they'll come here and they'll wonder what was wrong. And I go, nothing was wrong. I just came on early, asked for callers. There were no callers, and I decided to call quits and go to sleep early. Anyway, I uh, you know I wanted to know, I wanted to think about what I was going to talk about tonight to you uh, that uh, that uh, bothers me. And the only thing bothering me is what's going on in the Ukraine. I mean that is just totally pissing me off. Uh, I, I what do we do about it? You know, it is so frustrating to sit here as an American and to say, well, you know, what I would do is, you see all those, 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 those uh, tanks that are lined up down the road going into uh, Kiev, uh, which I used to know as Kiev, by the way, but, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, but Kiev, they're all lined up, and all you had to do is just, you know, take a couple of jet planes and just kind of just splatter the whole road and you can wipe out about a good uh, 40 miles of the of the Russian army just like that um, but you can't do that and why can't you do that because the Ukrainians have to do it for themselves because they're not NATO and they are not under our protection and for us to go in there when there wasn't a pretense to go in there. In other words, if they were a NATO country, we could then say, well, one of our own has been attacked. We have to get in there and stop it, okay? But we can't do that. And so we're going to sit here and we're going to constantly be bothered by the fact that, uh, that this is going on and feel completely frustrated in what to do. Now, you know, we're taking economic sanctions against Russia, and they're pretty harsh. I mean, I, uh, we know somebody who has uh, family in Russia, and they say that it's pretty hard for them right now because they're trying to send money to them, and they can't because uh, all, the, all the ways of sending money from American banks to uh, uh, Russia are completely obliterated. So uh, that's the way it is, okay? And uh, it is so sad, I mean, what's going on there and the fact that we can't do anything about it. All we can do is these sanctions and getting the whole world to yell and scream about it and for the UN to say, you're being bad, get out of there. Uh, and, and meanwhile, you've got this guy, you thought Trump was crazy. Now, Trump was crazy. There's no question in my mind about it. It, it, even if he wasn't clinically insane, he had megalomania, which made him insane on his own, okay? Uh, but this guy is really crazy. Uh, maybe he wasn't so crazy a couple of years ago, but he is now. And uh, uh, the only thing worse than a, uh, a dangerous dictator is a dangerous, crazy dictator. I mean, this is a guy who right now, I think, is living in some kind of delusion uh, that he has this situation in hand. And if you look at it, the Russian army, a lot of the people in the Russian army are defecting uh, 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 to the Ukrainians. And the reason they're doing it is because they feel bad about what's happening. They feel bad about what's happening because a lot of them have relatives or friends or people they know who live in, the, in Ukraine. And the fact of the matter is that uh, they were told that they were going to that point in the world, that place in the world, as a military exercise. They weren't told they were gonna go in and start blowing up uh, uh, civilian apartment buildings. I mean, it's not like they're going after strategic uh, st strategic uh, uh, military uh, uh, facilities. They're, they're going after apartment houses. I mean, why? What is what is that? Okay, uh, you know. And uh, I have something over here. This is kind of interesting. Hold on a second. Let me get it. I should have brought it over here before I did this, but it was only at the last minute that I decided I was going to do my little monologue. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me see here. Uh, 
this is really scary, okay? Uh, Russian shells, Europe's largest, you ready for this? Hold on, hold your breath, nuclear plant, and they've started a fire. Russian forces press their attack on a crucial energy producing Ukrainian city by shelling Europe's largest nuclear plant early Friday, sparking fire and raising fears that radiation could leak from the damaged power station. The assault on eastern city of Ener, uh, what is it, Enerbar, Enerdar, Enodar? Oh, well, forget it, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. But anyway, that city, and it's Zeporli, <laughs> I can't even, <laughs> I'm sorry folks, wait a minute, let me get on my glasses, but I don't think that'll help. Um, well, here, look at the words here, if you can see them. Can you see them there? There, that, uh, how do you pronounce that? Zaporizuzia? Zaporiz... Well, anyway, nuclear plant came as uh, the invasion entered its second week with Russian forces gaining ground in their uh, bid to cut off the country from the sea. Elsewhere, another round of talks between the two sides yielded a tentative agreement to set up safe corridors. But meanwhile, the nuclear plant spokesman, uh, here's another one, Andriy Kuz, told Ukrainian television that shells were falling directly on the facility and set fire to one of its six reactors. Oh, this, this is really bright of the Russians, huh? Got to remember, Chernobyl is in Ukraine, okay? Uh, that reactor is under renovation and not operating, but is there is nuclear fuel inside, it is said. So that, that's the sound of radiation right there. Okay. I learned that from sound effects school when I was... Uh, actually, you should do it with cellophane, but if you're going to do fire... It's on fire. Okay. Anyway, the house, the house, the house is on fire. Let the... Anyway, uh, let me see here. Where are we? So, this is the kind of thing they're doing. I mean, it's really, it's really horrible and stupid, and it's, it's like the, he wants to just completely decimate Ukraine. Now, here's the other thing. You say, here's what you're supposed to do. Wait a minute. My nose is itching. Gosh, that's why I hate to do these things. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, this is the part that really got to me, okay? Got to me big time is that they uh, uh, are also getting close to Chernobyl, which they could very easily. You see, if Chernobyl, it, it, was, it, was, it was contained kind of, but the radiation was still leaking. And so the only way they could solve the problem is they built this gigantic shell, okay? Uh, almost like a, how can I describe it? It almost was like a blimp, the kind of thing, you know how they used to store blimps in those big, half shells, you know? And um, it looked like that. But what they did is they built it to the side of it. They built this big container. Then they moved it into place and then covered the sides and sealed off the pile completely. And there it has sat since the whole event happened many, many years ago. Uh, the city is still uninhabitable. Nobody lives there. There are no animals in the area, I don't believe. It's, it's pretty decimated, it, 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 and it, it is a tribute to R Russian technology of the time that didn't believe that you had to contain a nuclear reactor. There was no containment. That's why Chernobyl blew. But anyway, Ch Chernobyl is there, and they've been bombing Chernobyl. Now, so far, the containment of that pile is still intact. But man, they're playing with fire on that one. And now they're going after nuclear power plants. Don't they have a little thing on their maps that say, <laughs> uh, oh, there's a nuclear power plant. Better not go there. <laughs> you know, of course, that'd be a good place for you to move to if they be if, if, if saying, oh, they never hit a nuclear power plant. But that's not true. So anyway, it's just what's going on. It's so inhumane. It is so horrible. It, 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 it just shows how 
well, how one crazy guy could probably torch the world. Uh, they don't know that he's not going to try and go for other countries now if he gets this one. And maybe that's our reason to go in there. I don't know, but we can't figure out a reason to go in there without starting World War III. Although maybe that's what Putin is betting on, is that we won't want to start World War III, and he has free reign to go in there and take Ukraine. But let me go back to something I wanted to say about Ukraine. I, I, it's very hard to say, Ukraine. You, know, you say, well, Ukraine is very easy to say. I have a very hard time remembering the name. I don't know why. I've got this blank. But anyway, I think of United Kingdom, the UK, and then I go Ukraine. Okay. But you don't call it, are you ready for this? You don't call it the Ukraine. It's called Ukraine. All right? Uh, and uh, somebody, I think, it was, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel who pointed out, you call it Ukraine, you don't call it the Ukraine, just like your mother shouldn't call it the Internet or uh, the Facebook, you know. Uh, it's not the Ukraine, it's Ukraine, and that's it, okay? The second part of this, which is kind of interesting, is when I was a kid, I had um, one of the first stereo albums that was ever turned out, or hi-fi albums that was ever turned out. It was turned out by RCA, and they had on it a whole bunch of tracks of various things between pop music and symphonic music and so on on an LP, okay? And it was uh, an LP, and it was hi-fi. I don't think it was stereo. It was hi-fi. And it had one piece of music on it that I loved. I just absolutely loved. Played it over and over and over again. I don't know why. I don't know what in me, what what played, uh, what it, what it brought out in me. But anyway, it was called the Great Kate, Great Kate, the Great uh, Gate at Kiev. Okay. So I always knew the city is Kiev because that's the way they pronounced it when all the classical uh, announcers doing classical music would introduce it. They would say, the great gate at Kiev. And I always knew the song, the symphony, and I always loved it. So I always called it Kiev. Well, it turns out now that the Ukrainians pronounce it Kiev. The Russians pronounce it Kiev, all right? So uh, it's not proper to call it Kiev now. Kiev, you call it, because you don't want to sound like a Russian, okay? And that's what you do to keep them happy, okay? Excuse me. I'm going to have some coffee. Mm. Is anybody listening to this rant of mine? I doubt if there's anybody out there. I really doubt it. Let me look here. Let me see. Uh, oh, first of all, i got to start it up. Well, there's some people listening to me. Okay. But anyway, what we're doing is terrible. I just don't understand why man does this to man. Well, why? You know, I, I always had this. I've been saying this for years, okay, ever since I started in radio and doing talk shows and everything, that what I don't understand is if, if you consider evolution, okay, we evolve, you know, as a species. Uh uh, we lose a tail, and we get maybe a prehensile tail, but the little, some people have a little nub back there, you know, but we, we evolve. And you would think part of evolution would be that this primitive nature of trying to kill other people or take land by force or do what Putin is doing, we would have evolved beyond by this point. And that as we go on, we should be better and better and better. And we just seem to be as, we're as horrible as two tribes in the middle of the jungle uh, in prehistoric times. Uh, you know, so I mean, it, it, really, it really is amazing that we haven't done anything, anything to uh, 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 improve our way of being. We have still, we're still the same primitive assholes we always were. And why a guy like Putin feels he wants to do what he's doing just blows my mind. I can't figure out why. Doesn't make any sense to me. So, you know, I, I don't know. You know, the other thing I have a hard time with here, I gotta tell you this, is talking directly into the camera. 
because uh, I have so many things in front of me, like I have a screen here and a screen over here, and, and I have a tendency to look at them, and when I look at them, I'm not looking at you. So I have to kind of just forget they exist and talk directly at you. Um, and I used to know how to do that in TV, but in TV I didn't. I had monitors to the side of me if I wanted to look at them, but I didn't. I would look at the camera and I would pretend the camera was a person's face and I was talking into the face. I would actually, best way to do it is I would talk to my reflection in the camera so therefore I could see myself. But anyway, am I rambling? Am I ranting? Am I whatever? But anyway, I just wish that, uh, that this thing were, were solvable. And, and part of me said, I think I'm going to get on a plane and I'm going to go to somehow get into, uh, into Ukraine and fight with them. What? At my age? Sure, why not? You know, why not use up the, the, the old milk in the refrigerator before you open the new carton? All right? And... Um, I felt it was strange because I'm very afraid of death and things like that. But the concept of going over there and fighting in that country to save them, okay, um, seemed to make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, that made me, that was something I felt I wanted to do. Of course, I, I don't have the ability to do it because I have to be here for my next appointment with my urologist. So, you know, that's what happens when you get older. You're tied to your doctor's appointments. Anyway, excuse me, I've got to, I've, I, I came over to fight with you here in uh, Ukraine, but I have every six months I have an appointment with a urologist. And I have to get back to the United States for that. But hold the war. Hold on. I'll come back, but I just got to leave for a while. I don't think they accept that kind of excuse. I don't think getting out of the country would be that easy. Although they say now they're going to be corridors to get out. Anyway, I... Uh, Listen, I, you know, there's nobody waiting out there uh, because they're all expecting that I was playing some kind of recording and uh, I just decided that it would be uh, fine to uh, go see uh, who, who is online and that's just one person and that's Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. Can you hear me? No, Jeff can't hear me. No, you Oh, you there are. he is. No. There he is. There he is. How you doing, Jeff? Good, good. Yeah. I'm in Georgia. You're in Georgia, okay. So, and you're yeah. visiting. Uh, you're visiting who in Georgia? This is my sister. Oh, your sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, how, how is your sister younger than you or older than you? A little bit younger than I. Yeah. A little bit younger than you are. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you you know anybody. She's probably looking for a boyfriend these oh, days. Well, I'm taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'm and I'm too old for her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, you're the only person here, you know. Which really? Is, which is fine with me. I'd rather talk to you. you no, no, because people like people like like Alan. They don't even listen to the show until like eleven o'clock. So they, they wouldn't know if I just started talking a half hour ago, and I was waiting for at least like two people to be there to go yeah. to the the thing and it's only you so it's just you and me well alan was uh, we were listening uh, yesterday last night yeah and uh the discussion was ridiculous what discussion my from on, my perspective on this show yeah what was oh, oh yeah because well who was with phil. oh because oh, phil was with us too yeah phil was yeah and, and i you know I like Phil, he's a nice person, but you talk to him about politics, holy mackerel, he's crazy. Well, I have to keep him tamped down a little bit, you know. I know. You know, uh, because uh, he just he just goes crazy uh, with his with his belief. I mean, he can't let somebody say something without having his two cents worth to say. Okay, and uh, so I'm I, I'm I'm kind of happy that he uh, he doesn't. Uh, uh, that you know that we only have him one night a week, you know. Yeah. And then everybody he else. Must, can he talk. must be challenging for you. Well, I noticed last night you didn't seem to say a single word. Yeah. Because you. There you, was nothing to argue with. Well, also about you're that. you're kind of real, you don't want to get in and compete for space, you know. 
you know, I mean, I like Phil. He's a very nice person. Mm -hmm. um, but it's his politics are just so crazy. Yeah. yeah. And you ask for any justification, and he has Fox TV. That's his only real source. Well, there are a couple of others. Uh, and they're they're worse than Fox. I mean, if you they're worse. It, well, if you think there's anything worse than Fox, yes, there is. There's Newsmax <laughs> and there's OAN. Uh, you know, I mean, what's funny is a lot of these stations that carry did carry RT Russian television don't cut cover it anymore. Uh, Roku used to cover used to have the RT channel until about two days ago, which I was enjoying watching because I love hearing lies that are almost as bad as Fox, okay? Uh, and uh, they took them off. Hmm. And they, so they took them off, but I'll bet I can go on there and get OAN. I bet I can go there and get Newsmax, you know? And the two of them are just as erroneous and wrong as you can possibly uh, imagine. So when you use those as your only news source, you're going to live in a, in a certain world, you know, and believe that, you know, a, a, a certain amount of uh, 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 lies uh, are true because you're going to, to Fox and you hear the lie, and then you go over to Newsmax and you hear the lie, and you go over to OAN and you hear the lie, and because you don't go anywhere else, like I, I won't even say MSNBC, like the BBC, as an example, which is certainly not a prejudiced source, um, it becomes a real problem, you know? So, whatever. I was uh, listening to different forces, mm -hmm. sources that didn't matter where it was, but mm -hmm. I hear that in some of the countries in Europe mm -hmm. that they're actually supporting uh, What's the name? Putin. No, not oh. Putin, but but the company against him. Um, what do you mean? You mean, you mean uh, 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 <laughs> Ukraine? <laughs> Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. I can not say it myself. So the Ukraine. No, I forget it. You know, it's funny. Maybe it's an old person thing or something. I, I at times I go blank on the name and I don't know why. I mean, it's so much in the news that should come to me like you know. My own name. It's not a. It's yeah. not a name that uh, that I ever remembered in the past. Yeah, I mean, I can remember Kazakhstan. I can remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Crimea. I can remember all those things. But I, uh, 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 Ukraine, I, I have to kind of like uh, Ukraine. And the way I'm doing it now is I remember. Uh, let's say England is the UK. Therefore, Ukraine. Okay. Right. Here's a. Oops. So I don't think you. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that they're being supported mm -hmm. by the Euro very many European countries. No. Like, I don't think France is doing much of anything. Well, uh, Fran uh, France is, uh, you know, is against what Russia is doing. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you who, who didn't, in the UN, didn't take up sanctions against them. India. <laughs> India didn't. And I was surprised about yeah. that. And Mexico didn't. You know, what do we ever do to piss off Mexico? You know? I don't know. Hey, Matt. Your, what is it? Uh, hey, Alex. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, we got Matt here. So now it's a friendly little group here. Uh, how? Saw so you, uh, you were a little light on the participants. So I thought well, I yeah, I, I, well, I signed on tonight, and I didn't run an interview. I just kind of started talking. And I just wanted to see how many people would call. And, uh, well, we just, just got Kevin. Okay, good. Always love to have Kevin here. Hello to Kevin. Always for the first half Oops. minute or so, his, his picture is like got streaks in it, and then it goes away, and I don't know why. I have no idea. Have you ever figured that one out, Kevin? No. No. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And it only does it here. Because I was on a Zoom call just earlier with the doctor, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the Russians. <laughs> so doctors are still doing Zoom calls, huh? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Saves me a trip to Monterey. Yeah. Oh, you put your doctors in Monterey? Yeah, a couple of them are. Really? Why in Monterey? Well, how far are you from Monterey? You're not that far, are About you? 45 minutes. Yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah. 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 I'd rather go there, but... Yeah. Well, look who's here tonight. Matt Duckworth is here tonight. <clears throat> There's Matt. I'm always lurking in the background. How's everything going on up in uh, Seattle? <laughs> is the job doing okay for you? It's great. Yeah, everything's running smoothly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I work from home, and the mask mandates are... Uh, Lightening up uh, the twelfth, I think, is the big day when the bulk of uh, the businesses can can relax. The yeah, mask. are you going to still wear a mask? I really don't want to. I'm so tired of it. I know I'm tired <laughs> of it too, but I think I'm going to keep yeah. wearing them for a while. I mean, yeah, you know. well, I just I just rejoined a gym, uh, and they're still wearing them. I was wearing it tonight, and it's suffocating. But they're going to get rid of that in a couple of weeks. So. Um, Places like that, it's too much when you're heavy breathing and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Well, no, well, I, ne I never wanted to go. To... Well, go ahead. What? Uh, th they say it's pretty safe now, so I, I feel safe enough. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. what if tomorrow they said, "Oops, things are getting worse again." Oh, well, then I gotta put that son of a bitch back on. Yeah, I guess. Did you see <laughs> that? See, see the that asshole governor of Florida? Yeah. Oh, did you, I did. Yeah. Did you see that? What he did, in case people don't know what I'm talking about, he was uh, uh, giving some kind of, I don't know, speech or something, and he had a bunch of kids in back of him, and they were all standing there wearing masks, right? And he said, take those things off. You don't need those. I mean, he was really adamant about yeah, it. Yeah, they're worthless. They're blah, worthless. Blah, blah, blah. They don't do any good, you know. Take them off. Uh, what the hell? Well, and one mother of one of, one of the kids who took his mask off, this black kid took his mask off, and the mother was outraged because she said, you, you forced my son to take his mask off, and then he comes home, and I'm immunocompromised, okay? Uh, and you're, you're subjecting me possibly to illness because of your actions. And he was, he was, he was just, it was the way he did it. And then when he, which, he, uh, he went back to his speech, he went back to the speech he was going to read and was going through and going, my God, I can't stand that. You know, he was getting really snarky about it. Huh? He's complete asshole. He's complete Because I only saw the, the clip and then they cut away from it. But yeah. which kid was it? Uh, just uh, some black kid there who. Because who, the part that I saw was there was a kid over on his. Well, looking at the picture on the left side that left his mask on, uh -huh. but they didn't say anything about that. Yeah, well, I, they, thought, I didn't. I, I didn't see any of them take the mask off, but, but I, I think I saw. Yeah, the same they all started off. taking them off, but the one kid, the one black kid on his his right. Yeah, that was the one. Us looking at at the at the uh, at the picture, it would have been his left. Yeah, he left his on. No, well, there's one on the right that took his off. Okay, because yeah. the one on the left left his on. He just kept standing yeah. there with his but, mask. I mean, you know, Nobody said a thing well, about that you, guy. Why, I, I thought he was pretty smart. He probably told him. Why you know, don't you do that? Up, I'm going to leave it on. Here, here's the best way to handle that situation. If you're a decent person, you get up there and you go, well, you know, you really don't need those masks anymore, but if you want to keep them on, go ahead. I, I uh, appreciate your desire to keep them. Okay. But no, he was being dismissive about it. He was being he chiding. He kind of mumbled about that, but he, then he turned around and said, "It's useless anyway, or whatever." Yeah. Like, what does he care? Why, why? Why does he care? It's not his. Because he's, he's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. He is an asshole, <laughs> and he has yeah. presidential aspirations. Okay. Yeah. What's know. his name again? I forget his name again. DeSanto. DeSantis. DeSantis. Yeah. Oh God, he's. A, a piece of work uh but uh, anyway so how's everything up in seattle uh, besides that uh, is work good for you yeah i'm still working from home and it's good i mean it's just really cold here i mean for me california boy initially <laughs> was uh you know 40 degrees is cold to me <laughs> what's interesting is that you took a job in seattle start a new job right I was in Seattle before I got this job. You were what? I moved here and then I got the job. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a work from home job anyway. So okay. I work, but what I'm I saying is it's a work from home job, but do they have an office? 
Yeah, but not here. Back east. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. But how do you feel about the fact that you don't really get to know your your fellow workers, as it were? It's a little odd. It's all just by video be, chat, or be, audio, really just audio chat. We because there's a whole socialization that we have in going to work somewhere mm. and, and, and knowing the people we work with and, you know, how you doing, Bob? How's the wife and kids? You know, and things like that. Just... The, the, the yeah. social nature of a job. Uh, yeah. Somebody once referred to jobs as an extended family, you know? They, yeah. That you had your home family, but then you had your work family. And and now yeah. you don't have that anymore, and that's got to drive you nuts, you know? Well, and then because I do tech support, it's nice to be able to just go to someone's desk and just look at them and show them stuff instead of having to, like, you know, connect to their computer and you know move the mouse for them remotely and all that so it, it would be easier yeah. but but i'm really liking work from home not to have to pack a lunch i hardly use any gas i don't have to drive to work you know there's a lot of benefits yeah yeah so i think it just depends on the job yeah the kind of job you're doing you know now do you let me ask you this by working at home do you work as many hours as you would work if you had to go to an office I do pretty much. Really? I'm just I'm just a nine to five, yeah. Oh really? I mean, it's oh, okay. so great. I, it's so great. I, I just roll out of bed and I can just log in and I can just start working right away if I want. And to. and what do you do exactly? What is the nature of your? It's kind of like like a help desk. A help you know, helping desk. Helping people, training people, have training classes, and so tech support basically. Tech support. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's great for more. I mean, yeah, I, I do miss some of that. Some of that socializing in the office is nice. What happened here? You know, I, I, I do. Everybody was frozen there for a while, for a short time. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering why. Anyway, have you guys been watching the uh, the fire at the nuclear power plant? Yeah. It, the fire. What do you mean in in uh, in it, Ukraine? Yeah, there's a not Chernobyl. Uh, another Ukraine. one. Yeah, I know. I know. I just read. I just read about it here. Yeah. Oh, I, to, I, I missed the first part of your. Yeah, I couldn't line. pronounce any of the places where it was, but you know. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the, yeah, name of, I, the name of the power plant is the unpronounceable power plant. That's my name for it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, at this point, I don't care what it's called. I just care that it's on fire. <laughs> yeah, luckily they say it was. It is a. It is a unit a reactor that is not operational, but it is oh. does have. You know, it is. You could. You could. You know, uh, emit some radiation from the thing if you made it explode. A fire Did could they say cause it. Was a reactor. Huh. Did they say because I heard it was yeah. a training building. No, it, it was. Uh, hold on a second. I'll I'll get see what I do with my paper. Right. That's the sound of the nuclear power plant right now. Either way, it's at the plant. Don't it isn't good. Uh, it's the eastern city of Inner Hodar. I guess it sounds like something out of Game of Thrones. I know Hodar. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's now get I, the name of the plant is the Zapor Izazihe nuclear plant. Well, I, I held it up before. Maybe you can. Anybody want to try and pronounce that name? Zapor Yeah, yeah. Who knows? I heard uh, what's his name, Anderson Cooper, pronounce it about fifteen times, and I said, okay, that's how he says it. Uh, uh, okay, fine. You, but you didn't learn how to say it yourself, right? Yeah, I could have if about ten minutes ago. I could have said it, but not yeah, now. Yeah, but I, uh, I saw a, I saw a headline that somebody put a million dollar bounty on Putin. I thought, that's okay, that's, who, that's a start. Who who put a million dollar <laughs> bounty on Putin? I'm not sure who it was. I, it, I think it was some some millionaire somewhere I, it's, I don't think it's a government thing it's just well a, let me know. just say it right now I, I will make the same almost the same offer uh, <laughs> uh, no I have learned to make a very nice dish lately which is chicken balsamic chicken uh, which is very is delicious in fact I just had it about two days old and it was incredible because you know how food kind of after two days gets even better so I had it uh, t uh, tonight and what I'm willing to do is I can't come up with a million bucks if somebody will kill Putin. But if you kill Putin, I'll invite you over to dinner. I'll make you some of this balsamic chicken. How's that? Huh? Quite an offer. Huh? I think it's quite an <laughs> offer. It's all I can offer. You know. Here is the thing. I was saying hello, Brian. Here, here was a question I got for you. 
This is one that I was thinking about the other day. My wife is uh, is going to um, part time at her job for the next two years. Okay, uh, working about a quarter of the time. All right, that she does now, being on call, as it were. Very very nice of them. But they 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 they're doing all their bookkeeping and stuff, which she normally did for them uh, over in China now or in Hong Kong. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I should go back to work to try and bring some extra income in. And then I went, what the fuck at 82 years of age can I do? Anybody have any suggestions what I could do? Walmart, Walmart greeter? Do you have Walmart huh? there? Well, I, I knew that was going to be the first suggestion, was going to be <laughs> Walmart greeter. I if you have Walmart there. Huh? I didn't know if you had Walmart there. Oh, we have Wal. No, we don't have WalMarts in uh, in Manhattan. They're not allowed. Oh, really? They're not allowed. But I mean, I could go to Costco, I suppose, and be some kind of a greeter there. You know, I don't you know. Like you could be some kind of a consultant, like a media consultant. Media consultant. Start. That that yeah, yeah. That, they don't exist anymore. Oh. Nobody cares <laughs> about media consultants. I have a friend of mine. <laughs> it's just YouTube and TikTok. I have a friend of mine, Walter Sabo, who's a media broadcast consultant. There are no broadcast consultants left. You know. Oh. Social media consultants. A social media consultant? I don't know the first thing about social media. I mean, that's that's media. what all there is now. I know. What it is is, is where before, I'll tell you how what social media is. In the old days, you used to go and audition for a radio station, and then they would hire you, and then they would pay you a decent wage to work at the radio station. Now you can do a podcast and not make anything. That's where our business has gone. You know. Yep. So, anyway, so I was thinking about what could I do to earn a living, just to bring some money in. You know, besides my social security and my pension from AFTRA, and. Uh, the uh, two hundred dollars a year I make off of uh, YouTube, okay. I tell you what, going going to be an electrician. I had an electrician over for an hour, and he charged me three hundred dollars. Really? <laughs> well, maybe I should say I'm an electrician. Yeah. Right. Checks. You know, and I probably can. I I think I could. What 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 did you have him do? All he did was put in a little a couple of boxes. Uh, in the wall to, to hold the wires that were no longer connected to a base heater, baseboard heater. <clears throat> I you should yeah. go I, on, they have those apps that you play like bingo and stuff like that, and they make a lot of money. <laughs> well, about, you get those commercials on there, the app. Oh, look at this well, check. Come on, I'm, I'm looking, all I did was play bingo on this app. I'm looking for the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm looking for suggest. real suggestions about what I can do. Now, one of the things I was thinking about is I signed up uh, up for this uh, these casting listings for extras. Yeah. Uh, and I can make work eight hours and make $189 SAG after wages. Mm -hmm. I don't know why SAG after thinks that somebody who spends eight hours doing a job should only make 189 bucks, but that's my union. Fuck them. Anyway. Uh, so I was looking at this. I You know, they were having a casting call for Mrs. Maisel for people in my age category and so on. And uh, they have one, they saw one today for Manifest and Black uh, mm -hmm. List, the Black List uh, they do here. And uh, so I, 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 might, I might try that. What, what, how does that sound to you, Ray? You're, you're in that business. Hey, I have to admit, I've done it. I, the last one I did was for a new TV show and they used my car. Uh -huh. And that they paid me a hundred a hundred extra for that, and then I worked two hours overtime, and I ended up making like four hundred and fifty bucks for six to eight hours. Of being day. an extra with your car, my car and overtime. Yeah, some of these ask for people with cars. Yeah, but I don't have a car. Well, they used to they used to rent the cars. Now they just get them from the extras. Well, I can't remember what show was asking for people to show up and just be pedestrians on Broadway. And it was some show you all know, and I can't remember what it was now. It wasn't Mrs. Maisel. It was something else. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I might I might just do that. What the hell? What the? That'd well, be fun. Most of Mrs. Maisel's outdoor scenes are shot on uh, the studio down at Paramount Studio. You know how, like, they have the outside of the, um, 
the comedy clubs. There's like I went down there and had a yeah. tour. I saw where they shot all these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they do shoot a lot of the exteriors here in New York. Yeah, yeah, the second yeah. Because the the show is very New York centric. Right. And it's and so I, weird. And they I do think I women, I do York. think I do think Mrs. Maisel is shot over at uh at uh, the uh, bread studio, the uh, Well, maybe now, but I I went and had a tour of the Paramount studio in um mm -hmm. in Los in Los Angeles uh, about before COVID, right before COVID, and uh they showed us where they shot it and they and they showed us the the front of the comedy club and how they decorated no oh, really make it look yeah, yeah. Oh. maybe they switch locations you know as we were watching it. mrs mazel i keep saying to marjorie gee maybe i could have been in that scene maybe i could have been in that scene you know <laughs> how's yeah. your butt crack you could be a plumber <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm trying to look at a way that an 82-year-old guy can make money. Right? Huh. Walk dogs? Are you kidding me? Well, that's I don't know. I just say what comes to my mind. Uh, the dogs would be walking me for crying out loud. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, come um, on. You know, it's not that easy. Not that easy. Uh, I mean, I'm 60 and I have a hard time figuring out how to make money. Really? I, I drive kids in the morning to school. I can't drive. I don't know how to drive anymore. I mean, I you know, I'd go buy myself a car and be a be a Uber driver or something like that. Uh, but I just oh you, you know, I just uh, I don't have a car. I don't know if I know how to drive anymore. I have no skills left, to be very honest with you. This is the only skill I have, and it's pretty much waning. If you listen to the first half hour of the show tonight, so you know, I try. I tried. There's, there's so many. There, there are so many uh, radio personalities who are doing what you're doing right now. Yes, that's why I why I can't make any money at it, and, and know, they don't either. Huh? They don't. Most either. of them don't either. They don't either. I look at people, and I I I think that I always say, boy, I don't have a lot of people listening to this. Blah blah blah, <laughs> blah and I bemoan that fact. And then I uh, I look at what the, the amount of people that are listening, and watching them, and it's less than me. You internet. I, I never imagined the internet would do this to people like you with like all the talent and skill and experience. I never imagined that thirty years ago, twenty yeah. years ago. Well, my old my newest joke has has been, you know what you call an out of work radio guy, a podcaster. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anybody anybody can do this. And, and they're proving that anybody can. Yeah, look at me. And I get very mad when I see that CBS goes, well, we have a new podcast from CBS. And I'm going, you have all this power to go get an audience by going on the air and saying, we've got a podcast, and I'm trying to compete against that? And they don't even know what podcasting is about. They don't know what this kind of broadcasting can be. They're All they're doing is, oh, uh, the story of uh, the mysteries are a big deal now in mm. podcasting. You know what that used to be? It was called books. Mm. You know. And true crime. <laughs> so so I so I just googled uh, how can an 82-year-old man make money? <laughs> Consider rent a grandma. <laughs> so they must have rent a grandpa. Where did I, I, where, where I see that? I think it was on Shark Tank. <laughs> I think it was on. So you wanted to be a whore? No, I think it was on Shark Tank, and they they were trying to get money for for rent a grandma. There you go. Can, uh, then they have a try international house sitting. Uh, sell your photos. Uh, get paid for copywriting. Sell handmade products online there you go get get some craft skills oh yeah what sd i can i can i can oh, do please. something for sd yeah rent your space yeah, i wonder if i if i went to sd and started selling voodoo dolls would they like that it's a I'm craft sure it's that. a craft they're probably already i bet you they have them already on sd you, you think oh. they have voodoo dolls on sd <laughs> as i said uh <laughs> rent your space uh you can rent your your extra space on Airbnb. You got a big place there. There you go. Yeah, I could rent but the Alex, the guest room. Yeah, yeah. But Alex, do, do you want to work because of uh, that you're bored, or do you need the money? I'd like to bring in some more money. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I feel I've, I've been sloughing off enough. It's been eight years or nine years. How long has it been? Eight years since I left Sirius XM. And uh, maybe it's time for me to, uh, or maybe it's been nine years. Anyway, it's time for me to get back to working. But if and I can work at a national park, yeah. actually, I was just at Yosemite and they had a bunch of people in their 70s and 80s working there. Yeah. And they're hiring. I guess you could yeah. be a docent or something like that, right? Yeah. You know what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. You had your hand up, uh, Jeff. Now, Jeff might have. Yeah, an idea I thought here. about two things for you. Uh huh. One is uh, potentially uh, to be a librarian. A librarian. It's very good. If I read books, that would be good. <laughs> there's, there, there's libraries right down the street of you, right? You don't have to go too far. And uh, you could help some of the kids. Who I are, wonder how well libraries some help. But I wonder how well libraries are doing these days. I, I have a friend going to school for that. You have to you have to get a degree in that. You, can't just you have to get a, a degree in librarian? It's Yes. What is what you is? Can't it? Just, you can't just apply. You can't just kind of go in and say, "Hey, I want to work here." Yeah. Well, uh, here are the various courses we have that you can take. Uh, there's shh one hundred and one. <laughs> Put the book back <laughs> in order. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I got to tell you, as a person who would work in a library, I still don't know what the Dewey Decimal System is all about. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> have you? Has anybody here ever been able to figure out the Dewey Decimal System? Yes, I took a library class when I was in college, and, really? I, and I did learn it. Does it make any sense? It does. It does. Really? It does. It's actually not that hard. Once you sit down and spend a half hour. Well, wait a minute. There's out. a great podcast explaining the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> <laughs> like anyone uses it anymore. What if you become like in a well, yoga li instructor? Libraries online? still use the Dewey Decimal System. They haven't gotten away from that. Yeah, that's true. It's all electronic. But I guess <laughs> what? What, what, Jeff? My, the other one that I think is probably the best for you would be the sales guy on the phone. Oh, 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 good. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're oh, a great communicator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it says, says, consider blogging. Grow mushrooms. Uh, consider blogging. Look, look at the mystery shopping. What? Mystery shopping. What's mystery shopping? Uh, new business owners of, I don't know, you go. Yeah. My actual, my, uh, my aunt used to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mystery shop? You, you get, you get put on to a, you get hired by a, a, a group, I guess, or a, a marketing company or whatever. Yeah. And you go in and you go shopping at stores and then you rate them and then they pay you. Oh, honest feedback. Oh, yeah. Yeah, honest feedback. The Mystery feedback. Shopper Providers like Association. You go into, like, Macy's and you buy some stuff, and then they, and then you, you know, rate the how you your experience was of the cashier and whether the store was clean and whether the clothes were in order and shit like that. And you keep the merchandise, and then you get paid to do that. Maybe I could do what these girls are doing now, makeup tips. There you go. <laughs> What about drug dealer? Drug hey, how about hey? You know something? Why <laughs> not combine two hobbies? <laughs> you know. <laughs> what if you grow shrooms on the roof and sell no, them? You, I don't think you should do manscaping online. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, look into national park gigs. That was mentioned. Somebody brought right up that. Yeah. You know, here's one that I'm. Well, see, I would do I'm very well. About. I would have done very well at manscaping on the internet. If it weren't for the fact that I've had them attack my prostate with much vigor, <laughs> and 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 really, uh, there's nothing to see down there any longer. In fact, I have to go looking for it. You know. <laughs> hey, Paid surveys site is called Cash Crate. We're on the same website, Brian. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Songs online. Oh, so what we're saying Careful is there's only crash. one website for this. Yeah, everybody's doing these. <laughs> There's sixty. There's sixty of them, though. Yeah. Here's one that I, I'm, I'm, I'm this one. I'm serious. You, uh, English as a second language, you could teach. You'd be good at it. I don't know if you'd like it, but my neighbor did it until well, the day I had to drive her to the hospital. When the she broke way her he head. slaughters it, probably Phil could, uh, you know, yeah, offer a course in English as a second language. <laughs> Yoga instructor. 
on the same website. <laughs> well, this is not helpful. <laughs> Did you Come raise your DJ. hand? Did Jeff raise his hand there? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. oh they do have the, the movie extra one, yeah. The movie extra. Yeah. Let your star quality shine by singing, uh, by signing on as a movie extra. Movie extra pays little than 80 hours, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm, I'm pan for gold. Well, I see, I'm after it. And uh, let's see, at $182 an hour, if I work how many hours a year, I can an get hour? insurance for my union again. $180. Do the extra then... hours count towards our, our hours? Oh, yeah. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you know, uh, I think it's how much you earn in a given uh, a given amount of time. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But I made it, I, you know, I now I now get my, my uh, SAG after it membership free every year uh, because uh, I have senior set status. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful that I'm able to have senior status in my union for a job that won't hire me any longer. That's, that really is great. What is do, that? Do you, do you have a pension? I got, another, I got another one of these thingies in the mail. Well, you see, ARP is something oh. a lot. I joined it when I was in my 40s. Was my business manager hit me to it and said, "You know, there's some good things you could get out of it." You know, and uh, as it turns out, I've I've been a member of ARP for you know since uh, George Washington and I were the first people on ARP. <laughs> I thought you had to be I thought you had to be fifty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, since no, you don't have to be fifty. You can. You, oh yeah. Yeah. No, you can join it. I think at any age, can't you? I'm only thirty five. They're sending me this stuff already. Yeah. You're 35. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, welcome to the 50s well, club. If, any, if anybody out there who's uh, who's listening to me has a job for me in the New York City area that uh, doesn't involve any heavy lifting, uh, I I'm you know I'm here. I'm I'm yours. I'm your I'm your bitch. What about pet sitting? Pet sitting. Yeah, yeah, you sure. had their their cat for a while, right? Sure, sure. Oh, pet sitting's easy, fun, companionship. But do I have to go to the ho their house to oh. pet sit? No, that would suck. I mean, if they want to bring the pet over here, I'd be happy to. You know. Yeah, yeah, that would be. I just saw a thing. Now I don't know. See, I mean, I have, it's years since I've had a cat, but when that cat was staying with us, she started to tear up our furniture. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> You know, it, was, it made a great scratching post. And I saw a thing on TV the other day. It's like some electronic device that you buy, that you put in your house, and it will make your cat not want to scratch the furniture huh? or be destructive. In that. Has anybody heard of this? No. Do you have a pet, uh, Kevin? Yeah. What do you have? Cat. What kind I of cat? I got one now. The other one died. What kind of cat? Uh, the kind with fur. One of those. You don't have one of those Chinese furless cats? No. <laughs> you know, Marjorie, whenever she sees those cats go, oh, I can't stand that. That's scary. And I think, that's the cat I want. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a tabby. <clears throat> it's a tabby. Okay. Yeah, but. <clears throat> running around looking for my glasses, and they're in my pocket. Oh, How yeah. old is Warren Buffett? He's 80 you something. You are 50. He's, he's 85, something like that. He's, well, why don't you just do what he does? Why doesn't he give me a job? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. He could actually give you a job. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, ask him. Maybe I should write Howard Stern and see if he wants to hire me to do something. That would be hilarious. Well, you know. He might, uh, no, but he might, act, he's a nicer guy these days. I, I listened to him the other day. He's not such a... He's not an a-hole anymore. I was really surprised. I didn't know that. Phil just sent me a note. You have a future in floor covering sales. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I might take you up on it. You, know. you could be the East Coast representative. Yes, right. Oh, man, oh, man. You know, I, I, just, uh, I just don't know what you do when you get older. You know, I mean, thank God... You know, she's got a house for. She got a, a condo, for instance. 
that she can sell for like four hundred thousand dollars or something, and you know that's in the in the pocket. We have that as a backup, you know, for money and stuff. So we're never we're not hurting for money. It's just that I thought to myself, I'm not, I'm not a you know I I haven't contributed to the welfare of this relationship in many a year. Uh, not that I haven't wanted to. I mean, for the first year or so, I was looking for work, actively looking for work. And then I realized what a absolutely ridiculous notion that was because I, I, I went to, uh, to WOR, one of the biggest AM radio stations in New York City. At least if I mentioned WOR to anybody, you know the name, right, uh, right Jeff? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and if there were any other people here from New York, the, the name WOR is gold, yeah. uh, or was gold. And I went to them, and I, I worked for them, right? And uh, did a little part-time thing to show them what I could do, you know. And then I worked for them another time because it was uh, New Year's Eve, and they needed somebody to take over. And so I did my show there with Albert actually producing the show for me because he was working as a producer there at the time. And guess how much I got paid? Anybody? Zero. I've yet to see a check. <laughs> okay. Zero. Now, yeah. wait a minute. I don't get this because to begin with, it is a union station, but they never, they never, they never called to say, hey, you know, where do we send the check? And I had worked for WR on several occasions earlier, many years ago, taking over for certain people uh, while I was working at Sirius XM. And uh, hell, I mean, they'd call me and say, where do we send the check? And I'd get 300 bucks for, you know, a three hour shift. Uh, but you know, what, I'm gonna go back into radio and they're not gonna ever send me a check? You know, come on. It's, it, it, plus, I mean, eh. Don't no, get here uh, on KGO, like the biggest, you know, it, w whenever anybody starts to get a, a, a following and they want more money, they just fire them. Well, KGO, which was once the number one station in San Francisco for what, something like 35 years? Oh, yeah. Is now number 30 or 25. It's a joke. Yeah. It just think, it went into the toilet. I think Chip Franklin asked for a little bit more money and King was just showed him the door. Yeah. And, and what's got to really piss off KGO uh, and, and, and all those other people who have radio stations is, what do you think the number one radio station is in San Francisco? KNBR? No. The Mexican station? Nope. That uh, makes a lot of things. No. KQED. Uh Really? Yeah, and KQED is not profit. Non profit. <laughs> so I mean, a non profit <laughs> radio station is number one. Except those people probably make a really good living. Probably not, because they're just no? simply living off subscriptions. Yeah, but they but so many of the people work there have been there forever. Yeah, but they're not making big bucks. They're not making. No, the, no. no. Then they, I don't think to this day, right now, they're making the kind of money I made when I was at Live 105 in its heyday. Right. You know? Uh, no, I know. You You made good money. Yeah, I made very good money for the time. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, I, you know, it, uh, uh, it, so, I mean, I don't think they're, they, anybody's making close to that there, you know? But they go, didn't oh, you, well, huh? What? Didn't you explain to us once that um, now the radio stations they just pre-record everything and it's all canned and everything? Well, what I think what I was trying, to, what I probably was explaining was the thing called uh, uh, voice tracking, and what happens is you you're listening to an announcer in Des Moines, okay, and here's his show and hi, it's his so and so, and here's the music by blah blah blah, and you know, and you're listening to it. You don't realize that the voice was done in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what was always so great about your show. You had that feeling of an event, you know, a live event. Well, I mean, people now have the ability to uh, just make these things sound like they're at, in your local neighborhood, you know, that's coming from your local station. But no. And then they have one person do voice tracking and they send it out to like 20 of their stations. So that's 20 people who are out of work. 
And I'll tell you, it sounds like that to me. It's awful. The, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I don't know anyone that even listens to the. I haven't listened to the radio in like well, 10 why, years. Why would you want to listen to music radio, for instance? Let's say you, yeah. let's say you like country and western. Let's just say that, country music. Hell, you, then you've got enough country music sitting on your uh, iPhone yeah. to keep you happy for the rest of your life. You know, I have no reason to turn on a radio station and listen to music be, and then be inundated by commercials, uh, uh, you know, uh, when I can just put on my iPhone, listen to what I want to all day long. That's what drives me crazy about KGO. I, st I still like listening to a couple people, but there's so damn many commercials now. Like, I just get sick of it. Well, I, I, oh, the part that was really funny when I did this thing at WOR, I love telling this story because uh, Albert, the second time I did it, was my producer on the show. He, he worked as the producer on it. And he said, uh, okay, uh, uh, you know, two minutes to commercials. Okay, and I'm hearing that in my earphones, and I keep going. And finally, commercial time. We'll be back right after this. And the commercial break starts playing. How long do you think that commercial break was? Each of them. Four minutes. Some, Four. Somewhere around seven minutes. Jeez. <laughs> and then they would come back to me. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Two minutes to commercial break. There were four commercial breaks in the hour, and they were all anywhere from six to seven minutes apiece. And I'm going, why would anybody listen to this? What they could, I'm going to say, stick around. We're going to do something after the break, and they're going to stick through it? No, there are already at 10 other radio stations. You know? That's what the problem with radio is. My answer was, in the old days, we used to run about... When I, at a certain point, I think when I started at Live 105 and I started doing my shows, that we did about eight minutes worth of commercials an hour, okay? And, uh, or maybe it was 12, let's say it was 12, okay, just for grins. And I, I didn't pay attention to anything. I just didn't, came in, did my show, um, made everybody laugh, Went to commercial breaks, went out and took a pee, got a soda, got a coffee, came back, did more show, and whatever. And as time went on, I started to notice that there was less of my show and more of the commercials. And so one day where I had been oblivious to this, I said, how many minutes of commercials are we running every hour now? And somebody said, oh, 21 minutes <laughs> and I went what and it's and all of a sudden I suddenly said you know the ratings on this show have been going down what it was is they were so hot to make money off my show because it was the highest rated second second highest rated show in the mornings in San Francisco that they started plugging more and more commercials in there and uh, uh, it was it it suddenly the ratings started to hurt and I didn't know why and it suddenly it turned out there were too many goddamn commercials I'll, I'll tell you there was many times when I was you know we used to listen to you when I was loading my trucks in yeah. the warehouse yeah and we load our trucks and I would sit there and you would be you know going with the guys and then you'd go to a commercial break and the last thing I would do was get my shit ready before I'd go into the into the truck and I'd always want to oh, We'll be right back. And I'd be getting ready to do something then yeah. and going, okay, he's not back yet. Okay, do something else. And it would take forever. And I said, fuck it. I'm getting in the truck and I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, it was always, you, know, you could always time it. And I know that happened because I remember that. Yeah. And there were certain things like you would do go take your leak or whatever. You could get this, this, and this done during the break. And then the, the you know, you'd come back. Well, and it got longer and longer. Well, that I was, noticed that. That was what was so terrible about it, was yeah. that, that it, we, it started, the commercials started to just take over the show. And yeah, I, right, but make it was, a delivery it, during a break. It, it was kind of my <laughs> fault, too, because, because I, didn't, I didn't realize that was happening. I was so oblivious to it, uh, partially because half the time I was high on coke, because yeah. uh, that's the only way you can do a show in the morning. Come on. 
Yeah. Uh, but I was just oblivious to it. And I suddenly one day I said, I just said, that was an awfully long break. How many minutes of commercials are we running an hour? And somebody went in and counted on the commercial log how many. And they went, we're running 21 minutes worth of commercials an hour. And I went, oh. Any- it's funny because there was times when I could, I, I would shoot out, make a delivery and shoot back and I'd be just making the commercials done, right? But then there was times as think time went on, I'd get out make the delivery and come back and I'd still be waiting for two more commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, back what, in the truck and, and and then what they would say to me in like the last hour of the show, they wanted me to do, they wanted me to do, uh, uh, play music, more music. Yeah. And I told them, go screw yourself. You're taking all this time for commercials. You know what? And then you're going to play music? How much time are we going to have left for, for a show? Yeah, and nobody, I, I, and I remember those. And nobody's listening to my show because of all the wonderful music I play. Right, and they cut short the comedian's time and everything else. Yeah. Was this at Live 105 or KML or? Mostly oh, at Live 105. Mostly at Live yeah. 105. Yeah, I think happened. so because yeah. I remember KML. You go on for they didn't have a lot of commercials. Yeah. Well, the only thing I liked was that the only commercials I liked was that they sold me when I do a, did a live read for a commercial on the show. The products would really sell. The advertisers were lined up wanting me to do a live read for their... Yeah, sure. And basically because I put down their product. That was part of the joke, okay? You know, uh, I mean, I used to sell the Vermont teddy bears by saying, you know, buy a girlfriend a Vermont teddy bear. It's the best way to say I'm sorry. One, two, three, four. I bought a few. I've got a box of them, Alex. You did a great job with with the Vermont teddy bear. Yeah, well, my my favorite quote thing I used to say was, buy the Vermont teddy bear. It's your way of telling your girlfriend, I'm sorry I had sex with your best friend. uh, I I probably got 15 of them in this house. Yeah, yeah. I got a, got that many. They used to send to me constantly. Yes, and then she would send them to me, and I'd go, "What the fuck you been doing?" Yes, Jack. <laughs> hey there, hey there, hey there. Heard this conversation, and uh, r- reminded me of something. When we were in Houston, mm-hmm. uh, you were at the big top forty station. Yeah, I was at one of the pre-urban stations serving the black market. Mm-hmm. And our commercial, I counted up our commercial load one day. I was doing afternoons at that time. Mm-hmm. And we were running 18, 19 minutes an hour. Yeah. 67. Yeah. Well, AM but, stations used to run that many, but FM yeah. stations only ran about eight. Sure. You know, point. at KMPX. Oh, look, there. Are, there it is. I have one like that. What does it say on the back? Blues Hog. Uh, yeah. Oh, they were they were a great teddy bear, too. I got to tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. They're well made. You know? And then some guys came along and bought the company. I, I had the guy on who came up with the Vermont teddy bear, and he was the sweetest, most, it just kind of this weird little, like, he was Willy Wonka is what he was. He was strange. And uh, he just loved his bears and stuff, and I, I liked the guy. <laughs> I thought the world of him. And yeah. then he sold the company, and the whole business went downhill. I mean, you know. The suckers would ship overnight. Yeah, it was yep. great. They'd be yep. there overnight. They had holes in the boxes so they wouldn't suffocate and everything. Yeah, yeah. That Matt, was, yeah was, Matt had his hand up. Matt? Well, you know, now that you mentioned that, you kind of pioneered that whole concept, didn't you? Because they do that on podcasts all the time. What? But you were kind of the first that did that, where the host reads the ad. No, no. They, they had – a lot of people did live, live reads. Mm-hmm. But, oh, really? But okay. I did okay. kind of live reads where I was almost endorsing the product. You know, and I would sell. But it was an ad. It was an ad, though, right? It was an ad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Kind of but ad here's the thing. Here's ad. what I loved about doing those live ads. I did so well at moving product. Sponsors were jumping over each other to have me do live commercials for them, and I finally decided when I renegotiated my contract, I wanted fifty dollars a read. In other words, per spot every morning that I would do. They started loading these things up with two two of my live reads an hour, okay? Over a four-hour show, I, I, I made a lot of money every year. I made about fifty to $75,000 doing just live reads, you know. So I didn't I'm mind us having too many commercials then. But, you know, I mean, it's just, 
it just I, I just one day I woke up and I said it's too many commercials you know and they went well we got to make money off your show while the show you know I said wow but you always made them funny so I didn't really even think of those as ads now that you mention it well that was know? part of it you know yeah uh, and and every one of them I made fun of the sponsor yeah. And people said, well, what do the sponsors put up with it? I said, I explained to the first sponsor who complained about me doing that to their product that they're going to look like a good guy if today I kid their product, I give their, I almost savage their product in some ways, and the next day they're still there advertising. They look yep. good. Yes, Jack. Hey, Alex, do you remember the first guy to do that on television? And, uh... Milton Berle. Um, no. And it was Henry no. Morgan. Henry Morgan. Mm -hmm. Not Milton Berle? Nope. No. No. Nope. No. Henry, Hen Morgan. Henry Morgan, who, uh, uh, what was it, uh, uh, floor shine shoes or something? I yep. wouldn't be caught yep. dead in them? Yep. Yeah. And the advertiser said And they goodbye. loved it. The client loved it. Good friend of mine, or well, a guy who was a good friend of mine, no longer is a friend of mine, uh, David Feldman, his uh, godfather was Henry Morgan. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. When you said Godfather, old... I immediately thought about my old boss. Well, no, his father, you see, what, what his father uh, was Chester Feldman, and he was the uh, producer of a lot of the Goodson Todman shows. And so that's where he got to know Henry Morgan. And Henry Morgan became a friend of the family, and when uh, he was mm. born, when he was born, they made him Godfather. Uh, Last uh, night on the intersection, we got to talking about uh, Betty White and, uh, you know, showing our age once again, I was reminded that uh, I first saw Betty White in 1956, and she'd already been doing television mm -hmm. for years when she got her first national show. Yeah, yeah. So maybe there's still hope for me and you. Well, maybe maybe there is. Um, it's funny. Um, Betsy Palmer was a good friend of their families, and I met her at uh, David's wedding, and she came on to me. And I I I would have. You would have. I would have. Yeah. You Except sure that my girlfriend was there with me. Isn't that always the case? And, but I, I had fun years later saying, um, you do realize that, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Jason's mother came on to me because she played Jason's mother in the uh, night, what was it, what were those movies? I can't remember which Friday one. the 13th. Friday, Friday the 13th, yeah. But uh, anyway. Well, the only person of note that ever came on to me, I was working at a big band station, you know, playing Sinatra, Tony Bennett, that kind of stuff. And I got an interview with Peggy Lee. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, publicity guy warned me, Peggy Lee is a dirty old lady. <laughs> and Peggy Lee comes on to, on to me, and she had to be old enough to be my mother, maybe even older. <laughs> and all I could think of is, was, you know, uh, I've gotten so old that a woman who's in her 80s thinks that I am a toy boy. <laughs> Ooga. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thinking about uh, things with TV, you know, you know what's on, uh, uh, I think it's uh, not Netflix, not, uh, it's uh, Amazon Prime this weekend, is... Um, the Lucy thing. The Lucy, Lucy thing. and Desi thing. Yeah. 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 I thought it was good, but if you if you didn't no know no the no backstory. no this is not this is not the uh, being the Ricardos this is an oh, actual oh. documentary. Oh, uh, and I don't, I don't know if it's on uh, Amazon Prime though. I think it may be on something else. I think it may be on it may be on Paramount. Uh, either being that Ricardos or is on H Amazon HBO Max. Yeah, HBO Max or something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, and then also this weekend in England, if you can somehow get it, they start the three season series. With uh, the uh, Prime Minister of um, of um, um, Ukraine, 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 of some Ukraine, Ukraine, U Ukraine, Ukraine. Uh, it's not the Ukraine. Ukraine. No, Ukraine. no, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Ukraine. 
Ukraine for I crane. We all crane for I crane. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, hey so uh, the the hour. Hmm? is this on Netflix? That 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 show? Uh, uh, what that the you you yeah uh, the Ukraine uh, president show? Uh, no, uh, oh. it's it's uh, in England on BBC on uh, Channel Four. Oh, okay. Except to get the right. It was uh, a four season, a three season series that he did, called uh, something. I can't. A servant of the people, or something like that, and it's about the president of the Ukraine. He plays the president of the Ukraine. This is before he became president, and uh, it's a four, a three season series, very short run series per season. Uh, but it's uh, it, it, they're gonna and they're trying to sell it over here. So we'll see if it comes over here. So Matt, every everything's going good with you, right? Everything is going good. I'll, I've just been watching the horror on television the past week. Yeah, that. yeah, that, that, you know, I just I wake up every day and I just you know, you know, I, one man is holding the world hostage. Yeah, yeah, it's worse than Hitler. He, well, and, and and what I what I keep thinking of is could. Hitler have risen to power in these times with all the technology we have now and we haven't been able to track what he was doing apparently fascinating. Yes. Uh, 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 no he yeah. got, no what he would have become yeah. what he would have become was president of the United States that's the problem you yeah. know i mean think about think about trump and think how close we've come to that kind of erosion of our democracy here mm -hmm. And, yeah. that they, and that that's still possible because there are the people out there to vote for him. All it would have taken maybe is Mike Pence not to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I've said before, my mother-in-law went through all that stuff in uh, World War II. And what exactly what's happening in Ukraine is what she went through coming out of Germany. Yeah. Did you hear they're like tossing bombs near those nuclear reactors? Well, they uh, they are. Yeah, they hit. They hit it. They hit it. What a comp uh, that is just oh my god, I can't even. What does he it. think it's he's like my childhood nightmares? Are I mean, does through. he want to just have a wasteland there? Is that his concept of winning? You know, it's crazy. The guy's out of his mind. Yeah, he really is. Totally. S uh, sorry, sorry to change the subject. I know we're gonna leave, but you know, you know, Mike Aiello, he, Alex, he, Mike Aiello. Uh, he he started posting. Uh, your show from Live 105. He's got like f three of them I see right here. He just started posting like a month ago, three Wh weeks ago. Where? Where is he? On posting? YouTube. Recorded episode? Alex Bennett Show Live 105, KITS, San Whoa. Francisco, August 31st, 1990. And then there's another one on here he just posted three weeks ago from January 7th, 1991. And there's another one from December or something. Hmm. Yeah, he just started posting these. Like, Three weeks ago. And where is he publishing them? He's, he's not doing on, on YouTube. On YouTube. Well, I maybe have to put an end to that. Yeah, they're like an hour and a half. No, don't get yeah, because I want to listen to them when I drive to Lodi. Well, it was That's an the, hour and a half. I, I so listen listen to my weekends here. I, I I run them all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that's it. There goes our uh, our uh, theme. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you, Matt, for being here with us. Very nice of you. Jeff, thank, thank you, you for being here before anybody was. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. I, you were uh, right in there, and so was Brian, and so was Ray. And then uh, Alan was late to the club, but, you know, thank you for joining us as well. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? Okay, there they go, folks. Wait a minute, i got to get my hand in here. There we go. Okay, that's it for tonight, folks. Let me just uh, get rid of the people on our, on our Zoom call. Uh, hopefully tonight Jack will be able to do his show without any real problems. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be waiting here to help him if he has any problems. In the meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, uh, it's our Friday portion of the show. We'll see you at 8 at 10.30 Eastern Time. And um, until then, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And uh, by the way, uh, just a reminder to get vaccinated and get a booster. And if you don't, wear a mask and if you don't wear a mask 
Uh, stay the hell away from me, please.